Okay, so we've got our, our sort of, um, it, looks, it looks kind of like a doll's head, doesn't it? Or, or sort of, um, yeah, sort of like a, a, a fantasy creature or, or um, female anime sort of head here. Um, except, of course, if it was anime, the mouth would be smaller and the nose would be non-existent. But, um, yeah, it's sort of, um, uh, we, we have our head here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean up the lips as much as I can. Um, so I'm just going to go back into wireframe. And you can see that um, if we smooth out here, we're going to be, s uh, the dist distance between this point and this point is quite sort of significant. And so this will be smoothing compared to this point and this point will be smoothing to that point and that point and that point and so it, it will sort of it won't be as um, uh, something that we control um, as easily as it will be if we sort of come in here with this um, uh, this smaller brush size and just sort of uh, reduce the size of these um, of these triangles just sort of to increase this this uh, geometry here so if we now come in and you can see that we have quite a sort of a smoother effect there. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, try to um, bring out this lip a little bit more um, and I'm going to give it a little bit of a, a sort of a, a point here, sort of a um, bit of a uh, when, when you sort of first sort of sculpting it out, it's probably going to look a bit like a, a turtle beak. <laughs> but don't worry, it won't sort of it won't end up that way. Or if it does, well, you know, we want it to at least sort of look good. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm just going to um, create a bit of a bit more of a sort of a cupid's bow um, here, uh, just to sort of uh, give us more of a suggestion of it being sort of lips. Now, um, when we're trying to sort of do um, attractive features, uh, just know that the the top lip doesn't need to be as pronounced as the bottom lip. Um, unless you're sort of, you know, doing Scarlett Johansson or something like that. Um, you can get away with sort of um, having quite a bit sort of less detail in the uh, in the top lip. Um, so just sort of just remember that and don't go too overboard. Uh, okay. So that's that's a fair sort of you know starting point I think. I'll just switch off the wireframe just so I can sort of get a better view of how the those sorts of lines are coming through. And remember what I said about perfection being something that we work at because. Um, you will sort of notice that there are sort of um, those those sorts of crumples there, those little sort of, you know, our characters have cellulite <laughs> at the beginning and uh, and we'll, we'll work on sort of, you know, uh, getting that, getting that sort of skin smoother later on. So now um, I'm I'm more or less fine with that. I'm just going to sort of um, make this mouth shape a little bit better. You can see these sorts of you, you'll notice things um, when you when you sculpt features, and you'll go, "Oh, that looks like," um, and and you'll realize um, how to do caricatures of people uh, by creating structures that actually look like real life things and you'll, you'll notice that these sorts of grooves here, these sorts of troughs at the side here, um, I, I mentioned sort of Scarlett Johansson before, she sort of has these sorts of grooves here so just sort of, you just keep those in mind for, for if, you, if you want to create a ScarJo type character, um, you can go, oh yeah I, I, know, I know a trick um, to create a character like that and that is that I create these sorts of slight sort of grooves at the side here. Um, so yeah, the more you work on anatomy-based sculpture, uh, the more you'll you'll sort of recognize 
uh, elements of it in other people. Uh, and uh, yeah, when we sort of zoom out a bit, you can see that that mouth looks quite narrow compared to the rest of the face, or at least the, the, this front lip here. So I'm just going to come in here and just sort of spread out the lip just a little bit. Have to compensate for the um, for the delay that we're getting with the uh, video recording software. But yeah, we we'll just sort of create more of a. So that that's looking a bit better for size. And then I'll come in here and I'll fix up this here. You can see that we're sort of stretching there. So what I might do is because we're getting these very sort of elongated triangles here, I'll actually come in with the reduce brush. And I'll bring this size down. And I will click a couple of times around here uh, just to sort of bring that back to more of a an overall sort of um, larger triangle base and then I'll come back in with a smaller brush and that will sort of even out the uh, the triangles that we've got here, make them more sort of uniform which means that when we soften this area with the, uh, with the shift key held down to sort of smooth it out um, you won't get that sort of that stretching or that streaking in the mesh there. So um, uh, for the time being, I, I think I'm all right with that that mouth, he said, as he continued to fiddle with it. And there we go. And you can see how, um, because the top lips here have um, got almost as much volume as the bottom lips here, how it can sort of look a little bit sort of strange. But uh, don't worry, we'll be all We'll be um, probably fixing that up later on, or not, depending on how I feel. That's all right. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so uh, coming in and uh, having a look at around these eyes here. Um, I'm just going to come in with. You can either use the inflate or the draw brush. Uh, I'm going to use the draw brush for now. We'll turn wireframe back on. And uh, I'm just going to hold down Alt, and you remember Alt reverses whatever we're doing. So uh, holding down Alt will actually push in instead of pull out from the surface. So you can see that that's quite sort of um, that's quite a serious uh, gouging there. So I'll just undo that and hold down Control uh, and scroll down. You can see that we we were on sort of you know less than half. So the draw brush is quite a severe sort of brush um, or tool. So uh, just just be aware of that. Oh, and I am using a mouse for all of these, uh, just so that um, anybody else who's out there who perhaps doesn't have a tablet um, can follow along with this, and you and you you don't sort of feel left out and feel like oh I can't do this because I've only got a mouse. Well. Um, you can. You just need to sort of, just need to stick with it, and just sort of, just have the confidence that you can you can do these sorts of things. Uh, so what I'll do is, I'll again, getting a little bit of a delay based on that, um, based on the recording. And you can see you can sort of uh, bring the eye out a little bit more, and so I'm just sort of alternating between using the draw and then um, holding shift to smooth it out um, but if you if you imagine that your character's eyes are closed um, while you're sort of while you're doing this um, you can sort of get the the uh, the shape of the eye um, you can get it looking quite nice so now I'm just going to switch to the grab because I want to just sort of narrow this slightly and bring in this this corner of the eye 
down just so that this, this cheekbone isn't quite so um, so severe, so high up. And uh, what I might do is just sort of um, I'll come in with a smaller brush size, hold down control and um, mass wheel down to reduce my strength, and then I'll uh, with the control still held down, I'll click and drag around here just to sort of create a bit of a a mask just behind this nostril here. Uh, and then I will control click outside just so that you can invert that mask. And then holding down control and scrolling up to increase the strength. Holding down shift and scrolling up to increase the size. And we can sort of bring in this sort of this uh, part of the face behind the nose, and uh, and I think that's probably the last time that I'll tell you um, what I'm doing with the hotkeys because I think you probably get it by now. Uh, I'm just going to reverse that mask just so that I can pull this nostril back uh, without um, without affecting what I've already done. And, um, Oh yeah, I don't want quite such a hard edge there, or quite such a rectangular sort of edge there. Uh, so I just uh, took the whole mask off there, and I'll bring this around here so that we've got this sort of side of the nose there. And now we can sort of bring this back and round it out a little bit. So you can see how you can sort of come up with a with a nose like that. I like noses with with like this little triangle here. Um, it's it's a rare feature. Not many people have it. There's there's like a newsreader in Australia who has it, and um, I'm just fascinated by a nose because it's like it's almost like a a cat's nose. Um, but um, yeah, I do sort of I, I, if I um, come up with a, with a sort of a, a nose like that, I go oh that's quite nice and I'll I'll keep it. Um, I think even Sarah Michelle Geller might have a, a bit of a honker like that. Um, but, you know, not as big of, uh, of a fan as I am. But, um, yeah, I'll sort of bring in the nostrils here. Uh, and bring these up again, increasing strength. You can see that we are getting it a little bit too far out there, so I'll just undo that. And um, uh, again, just going to increase where that mask is, just so that we are only getting that that sort of portion there. That's more like it. Okay. And at this stage, we we only really need the suggestion of a nostril. We don't need to sort of. We don't need to like. Sculpt a sinus cavity into this uh, this person. So yeah, just so that when we sort of when we look at that nose, we go, oh, that's a nose. We don't go, oh, that's a triangular uh, piece of um, cartilage that for some reason is sticking out of the center of somebody's face. So there, smooth that out. And um, it's funny uh, when you're sort of drawing these sorts of things, you will notice that things come out uh, that actually exist in biology. Like um, there is actually a join in the cartilage here, uh, where the cartilage at the front of the nose joins onto the nose onto the nose bone, um, and it, it just sort of naturally occurs. Uh, but that's a little bit sort of um, severe for me, so I'm just going to take that down a bit. Bring the back of this nostril back. Right. Bring it like that to the side. And there. And there we go. And um, I will say that a lot of beauty can come down to the imperfections that you leave in. So just remember that. 
a lot of the most interesting looking people and some of the most beautiful people on the planet um, are that way because there are imperfections which make them different, make them sort of look almost stranger than um, the average person. So if you're looking for a, um, a more sort of um, unique looking character, just remember sometimes it's it's the mistakes that make a person sort of look nicer. Okay, so that's the uh, the nose looking quite a bit better. Um, this uh, eye, I'm uh, I'm actually quite happy with the um, with the shape that that eye has taken. Um, what I might do is actually add some eyeball type um, structures uh, so that we can um, create eyes which look like they belong uh, and to do that I'm just going to come up to new sphere click on that and uh, in don't click on new scene or you'll get rid of all that uh, click on add object you can see that we've got these huge great big googly eyes so I'm going to add those and um, we've just turned her into a fly <laughs> but that's fine uh, we'll just sort of scale these down so that they're they're more or less the same size as, as eyeballs um, now this raises a, an interesting issue is sort of you know how is it that these um, these tools that we've been using like the grab tool and we haven't used the scale tool but if we use the scale tool you'll see it sort of has a very different effect to this um, how are we using these like this where we're moving the whole object whereas if we used it on the object that we had before we um, we wouldn't get that sort of that total control and it's because we've got this global button uh, pressed here uh, so I'm just going to um, kind of scale these up a bit because I want these eyes to be the sort of size that I can imagine being in the um, the eye socket here and then I'm going to move this back it to the side here and I might have just lost it yep okay so I'm just going to um, I'll bring this out and over and just be aware that um, there's no easy way to sort of switch between objects um, in Sculptress it is really more or less about clicking on whichever surface you can get to so just remember that but well, we've got we've got eyes there now and um, so uh, we can now click back on this object here and uh, I'm just going to take off global um, and I might go back to draw and again clicked on the object um, if we sort of come in here and making sure that we start on the eye um, on the skin of our object there you can see that we we can sort of um, create the, uh, the image that we want there so uh, what I might do is uh, come in and um, I will mask out areas that I don't want to be affected uh, and to do that I'll increase my strength and I might increase the size as well and I'll just sort of mark in areas that I think look fine mm, maybe not that much okay so there we go looks like some sort of freaky superhero so uh, in the next lesson uh, I'm just going to come back into uh, this character and I'm going to um, continue to sculpt these eyes and hopefully make it look uh, slightly more human than what we have here so uh, I'll see you for that one